Well, good afternoon. Last week we finished up the legs for the bench that we're making, and this week we're going to work on the actual bench portion. As you might recall, that is 10, 10 by 10 inch rough hewn semi live edge timber. I can't wait to show you the process. Let's get to the shop and get started. And now on to the giant beams. These beams are 10 inches by 10 inches. They're somewhat live edge, if you could say. Uh, a local guy on the mountaintop near me, he is quite the woodworker. He has his own sawmill up on his site, so he has these cutoffs. He gave these to me. I've, been, I've had these for probably three years, just sitting there knowing that I was gonna probably make a bench with them. So it's pretty cool to be able to come on in and finally get to work on them. Also, I often tell people or suggest that when doing work, stay away from 45 degree angles in your designs if it's a very visual angle or very visible, I should say, angle. Uh, that's just because we see 45 degree angles in everything we do all the time. They're very common, they're very recognizable. So with that said, these are 30 degree angles that I put into that. Again, just making a slight differentiator visually between the common and the uncommon. I talk a lot about my angle grinder here and using this abrasive sanding disc wheel on it. I think it's a 7 inch sanding wheel um, and it's just such a great tool. This was a pretty dirty rock encrusted piece of wood, both of these were, and there's nothing else that you can take all of that material off and not worry about it getting damaged than that angle grinder with the, with the 36 grit, actually this is 24 grit uh, sandpaper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this wire wheel. I saw this technique, I don't know if, how it's going to look, I've never done it before, but I'm gonna distress the material. I'm gonna carve some grooves in it. It's, I'm trying to make it look aged, but without making it look cheap or cheesy. And actually, I think it came out pretty darn well all in all. And there are also these really interesting areas where the beetles, the grubs, the larvae burrowed into the sides of each of these pieces of wood, leaving their little homes, their little trails. I was going to sand those off. I just decided to sand them down a teensy bit, but leave them in for the overall design because it does make a kind of an interesting pattern. Just going to hit these, these uh, bench tops with the torch to get that nice charred look, close up those pores, get it ready to have some acrylic applied to it. I like the charred look. It, it makes it look like it has history to it, that it's been around a long time. It, it does not offend me whatsoever that there are spots that are charred, charred completely black. Um, I actually like that look. Now I'm going to apply some strapping to each side, 30 degree angle again on the strapping to match the angles on the woods, just making sure that this is completely level with itself and it, it worked out well. Uh, I have these old bolts, a lot of metal that I keep uh, on my work shelves and I'm going to strike a bolt straight through this angle that you see here uh, to get that tightened up and then I will apply those, those other large metal straps over the top so that you won't even know that bolt is there. I put that blue painter's tape, by the way, I hate painter's tape, but I put that blue painter's tape on there just to give me a visual of the angle that I'm going to be drilling at. And this was actually a pretty cumbersome process. I needed to use all sorts of bits because the bolt that's going through is probably three quarters of an inch in thickness. Uh, and none of my drill bits were long enough. So I had to use all sorts of uh, interesting <laughs> methods to get that bolt through. And now I'm using a Fostner bit to countersink deep into the wood so that when I finally do apply the, the nut and the bolt head won't be seen from the outside they'll be flush and I'll apply the metal strapping over the top of that and you won't even know that they were there. People ask me all the time where I get all of my pieces of spare metal from, and it's a bit of a hybrid of an answer. I, I do sometimes purchase metal, but like this particular strapping here, I'm sure I got that somewhere out of an old uh, wagon or an old tractor off in the farmland. But one of the things I would recommend people do if they're looking for all sorts of interesting pieces of metal, walk railroad tracks, especially derelict railroad tracks. Walk them for a full mile, you'll find lots and lots of railroad spikes, all sorts of interesting pieces of, of metal that's probably fallen off. Um, and that's, I, I walk railroad tracks all the time. I love doing it. I always come back with something interesting. Now I'm just drilling these holes, pre-drilling these holes for these half inch lag bolts, these really long half inch lag bolts. They're gonna act as the posts that are gonna go from the legs into the bench itself or vice versa. And here I am going and pre-drilling those holes to inset the, each one of those lag bolts.
Out of complete coincidence or pure luck, this thing is perfectly level and extremely sturdy. I couldn't be happier. I'm putting the strapping on now, and this really serves two purposes. First and foremost, it adds a lot of stability, structural stability to bonding these two pieces of huge timber together, but also it, it does hide the hole from that gigantic bolt that I put through. The gigantic bolt um, doesn't really offer a lot of structural stability, but it keeps them sandwiched together, but they can still move. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find some brackets. I, a while ago, made these little brackets. Uh, I think I have four of them to put onto each of the legs. And I'm gonna have to go ahead and make an, an additional four to give it um, two-way structural stability. Adding a little bit of that type bond glue and something didn't quite look right when I looked at this. And then I realized they were reversed. And we will never speak of this moment again. Here I'm just cutting up some stock, four more pieces, about seven inches long to make four more brackets with. I'm gonna have to mushroom out each end to put a hole into it uh, for fastening it to the wood and I'm gonna have to bend these to a 30 degree angle out of sheer coincidence actually. Like with my welding, most of my forging needs touch-up work afterwards, needs some profiling done on the grinder, uh, and that's no different here. I, I needed to go ahead and make sure that these were these, these looked good aesthetically before I go ahead and put that 5 16th hole into each one of them. I do not like using modern hardware, modern bolts and screws as best I can, uh, but I didn't have, I ran out of the square head or the pyramid head lag screws, so I'm using hex heads for now. Once I order some more of those pyramid head lag screws back in stock, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over in the house and, and replace each of these. But these work for now, just no one look underneath. It makes me, makes me shiver just a little bit thinking about it. Very, very sturdy, feels good on my sit-upon. Uh, most benches, from what I understand, are somewhere between 18 and 20 inches in height. This is exactly 19 inches in height. 10 inches for the beams and nine inches for each legs. It was just perfect. And last piece, one thick coat of polyacrylic over the top. Should do the trick. And now, the bench in its natural habitat. It kind of looks like a creature. It reminds me of those Imperial walkers in the uh, Empire Strikes Back Star Wars movie. But it's got personality. It fits in real well with the aesthetic within my house of furniture. And I really like the way it came out. Well, thank you for joining me on that build. That was an interesting build. It was difficult, took a little bit longer than I thought I would. Uh, some of the things that I learned on making that bench is first off with the legs. The design that I made for those legs had me cutting too close to one side of that piece of wood and it became very difficult when it, when it came time for me to put them all back together like a puzzle. So next time when I do that, I will be cutting much closer to the middle, just keeping things a little easier for um, me. Also, my bandsaw blade is about half an inch thick and my bandsaw is not super powerful, so it made cutting even even the smallest of curves really in those pieces of timber that are four to five inches thick it made it really difficult so I will be using a quarter inch blade I'm gonna invest in a quarter inch blade coming up here for my bandsaw the third thing that I learned and I'm a little bit embarrassed about this is that I need a better method of drilling into pieces of wood in an exactly true and plumb way. The holes that I drilled into the legs were ever so slightly off. One or two of them, I was just eyeballing it. And I should know better. If I'm gonna attach those to something whose, whose bottom is flat, that I need to be able to mate up those two faces, I should know better. And I do have a jig of sorts that should help me with that. I just didn't think about it. It's been a long time since I've done woodwork. I didn't get it out in time. Next week, I will be making a present for my brother. I'm gonna be making something called intarsion which is essentially a wooden puzzle in a picture of he and my girls. And I'm really excited because I think he'll be very touched by it. He's very, um, he's an amazing uncle and the girls just love him. So it'll be his Christmas present. I look forward to having you along with me for that build then. Thank you for stopping by until then.